This is the free motion quilting tutorial for Tropical Flower. This design is being sponsored by From Daisy to Paisley, a book of 50 beginner level free motion quilting patterns. Check out this book and support the free motion quilting project at daystyledesigns.com. Now let's get back to Tropical Flower. The first thing you're going to do when quilting Tropical Flower is to stitch a circle in the center of your quilting space and then branch off of that circle with this very wiggly, very um, fluid set of tree roots. And it's kind of just a little cluster of them and I'm kind of stretching this out up towards the edges of my quilting space. And you can make this as big as you need it to be. So if you need a 4 or a 6 inch or even an 8 inch flower, what you're going to do is just simply make your petals half that length. So if this petal is you know, two inches long, then uh, both sets of the petals on one side and the other side are going to cover about four inches of space. So that's really what you want to concentrate on is making sure that the tree roots kind of stretch up to create kind of a petal shape. And later on in this video you'll see that it's actually easier to stitch the petal shape first and fill the tree roots within it rather than doing it this way where you're just kind of freeform filling and creating the tree roots cluster first simply because it's kind of hard to get that petal shape perfect whenever you're just stitching wiggly lines like this. Now this design is actually a variation of another design called Root Pockets and basically it's stitched almost the exact same way only this time it's being stitched from the center. So I did start in the center of this quilting block and pulled up my thread, stitched the little circle, and then used a needle to hide the threads inside the middle layer of the quilt. Uh, I did that so that way the thread would be out of my way. And starting in the center, while it's not very typical, it definitely works to create beautiful flowers anywhere you want to put them on your quilts. Now we're going to start the second part of the design and you can see that I'm just simply uh, echoing around that cluster of tree roots to create this pretty petal shape. And then to build it up, I just simply echo stitch around that petal, build it up a little bit so it covers more space. Now it was about right there that I really realized that it was going to be hard and very tricky to evenly space these petals around that circle when I was stitching the tree roots part first. So instead I switched over and just simply started stitching the uh, petal first. And you can see the petal was stitched first and it's kind of like a boundary line. kind of gives me just a little guide to know how far I need to take those tree roots out and keep them in that nice teardrop shaped arrangement. And it's a lot easier to stitch it this way. If you want to go back and watch the root pockets video, that design will also be easier if you stitch the leaf shape first and the tree roots second. But, you know, it's really one of those things you got to kind of play with it and just see what works best for you. When I stitched out uh, root pockets, a lot of people were wondering how I managed to travel stitch this many times over these tree root sections. And it is very dense. You can see how much darker those areas are versus the rest of the design. And the reason that I'm able to do this is simply because of the thread that I'm using. Uh, in this video I'm using Isocord polyester embroidery thread. And this thread is very thin, very strong, and it's able to travel stitch multiple times. I can usually travel stitch about five to seven times over one area and it not shred or break. And that is something that cotton thread really simply can't do, or at least I haven't found a thread that can do that. Uh, to travel stitch so many times over one place simply because it's usually too thick and usually too weak. But travel stitching is a beautiful thing and it adds such a layer of richness and texture to the surface of your quilt. Uh, of course this is going to be pretty dense and going to be pretty tight so this is not a good choice for a bed quilt. So bearing all that in mind here's what it looks like when you finish Tropical Flower. For over 300 videos on free motion quilting, plus many tools and supplies to make this easier on your home sewing machine, check out daystyledesigns.com.